So in the uh, previous uh, two or three sessions, we are being <coughs> going through the terminal characteristics of the DC shunt generator. And I think in the previous lecture, I had uh, given you a summary about the terminal characteristics as well. So I have told you that all, in all these cases, we only consider the IARA drop. Okay, we have not considered the armature reaction effect actually. So today in this particular session, we will be starting, we will be doing our discussion including armature reaction along with the IARA drop and how we can find the terminal characteristic. So I have already drawn the OCC here and the RF line also. So this point at which the OCC and the RF line intersects is called the operating point. And uh, in this particular session, I will be using a lot of letters, okay, E1, E2, E3, etc. Just for clarity, okay. Now this length E1A1, <coughs> that means this length here, E1A1 is actually representing the uh, armature voltage at the no load condition, right. So E1A1 represents the armature voltage, armature voltage at the no load condition. This you know already. Okay. And this is also the terminal voltage at the no load condition. These both values are exactly same. That is what we usually do. We project it and write Vt at no load here. Right. Now, uh, to find the DC generator terminal characteristics with the armature reaction, a small procedure has to be used. So, you know that uh, as Ia increases, so here let me put Ia and here let me put it as Vt. As Ia increases, Vt will decrease. Okay. Now, <coughs> the decrease of Vt is basically due to two reasons. Okay. So, now Vt decrease is due to two reasons. So, one is the IARA drop that you already know and that we have already considered here in the previous lectures. Now, second reason is actually the demagnetizing effect. The demagnetizing effect of the armature reaction of the armature reaction. So, these two effects we have to consider. So, this we have already considered and we have to consider this effect. Why? Because the demagnetizing effect actually reduces the internally generated EMF itself. So, if Ea decreases naturally, Vt is equal to Ea minus IARA, so Vt also will decrease. So, that we are going to consider in this particular session. So basically, this is a small procedure which you have to use and if you use it properly, you will get the results. All right. So, now let us consider the uh, full load condition. Consider Ea at full load condition. You remember the method one for predicting the terminal characteristics, what we used to do? We used to take a particular value of Ia and then we used to find Vt. Okay. So, here we are taking Ia at full load condition. Okay. Now, another change which you can see in this particular graph that I have made, usually I put If here, but this time I have used field ampere turns per port, which is MMF. Okay. Now, you already know that uh, MMF is nothing but equal to Ni. Okay. So, Nf I into if I can put anyway the current and MMF are a linear function so I can replace this by field ampere turns per pole also same value only I will get and uh, <coughs> so let us first take the demagnetization MMF okay so demagnetizing MMF at the full load condition okay now you know that the IARA drop and demagnetizing effect or the MMF is actually the function of armature current only because this is a uh, shunt generator and uh, the armature reaction is a function of the armature current only. So, both are functions of armature current. So, let us first take the demagnetization MMF at full load condition. Now, that value uh, you put it here. Okay. So, let me point this call this point as O and uh, that value let us call it as OD. Okay. So, demagnetizing MMF at full load is called OD. Okay, so, that I have drawn here. Now, the reason of drawing it in this direction is because it is actually a demagnetizing effect. Uh, now, if uh, you consider a uh, cumulatively compound generator where actually the field would increase, that time we will use another method. Okay. So, anyway, for understand that if the flux is reducing, we are going to put it in this direction. That actually has a reason why because you want the field current to uh, show a reduced value because IF star is equal to if minus uh, the armature reaction divided by nf remember this relation so always it's a negative value okay so that is why we put it in this particular direction okay now uh, so that is the first thing now second one you find out the iara drop because you have already 
found out uh, told that is i a at full load condition so this will be equal to df okay you mark the i a array drop so i a array drop let it be this value here okay so df represents the i a array drop okay now the third step is drawing a line drawing a line parallel to o e1 okay o e1 that means this line this line right so let us draw a line parallel to the o e1 so i am drawing a line parallel to o e1 okay now it intersects the occ at two points okay e2 and e3 okay so just for naming sake i will just take some names here so let this be a3 and that this for just for naming and this is a2 okay so it intersects at two points so that means the value e2 a2 okay what is that it is the emf in the armature at the full load armature current ia okay because this is the <coughs> representing the full load line this is the e2 at the full load condition and uh, e3 a3 also is the emf in the armature at the full load condition why do you have the same uh, two values because the characteristics is a double valued function that we have already discussed why it is a double valued function and all, okay so now the next thing is to find the value of vt in the earlier class what did we do we just put it here and we put it here we project downwards to the rf line and then we found out this value here we projected and then we found out this value but in this case it's not like that because you are considering the demagnetizing effect also you see that it has just shifted a little bit so here what you do you join the value of of <coughs> join the of points and the step is to draw parallel lines from e2 and e3 and which is parallel to which is parallel to of that means this value okay so let me just mark the parallel lines here so this is parallel to this and the next one this will be parallel to the line which i am going to draw here now so this line is parallel to this line and this line is also parallel to that line okay so now <coughs> this particular intersection you see that will be our terminal voltage okay not this particular intersection this intersection which i can call it as e3 dash and e2 dash that will be our intersection point okay so if i put just the values here just for naming a3 dash and uh, a2 dash okay so e3 dash a3 dash will represent the vt at full load condition and e2 dash a2 dash will represent vt at full load condition double valued function right so i can just project it here this value same value is equal to this value here right this value and this value are exactly same so i can project it so i'm projecting it here this also i'm projecting here okay now let full load condition we already know right what is the full load condition that is a known value so let me put it somewhere here okay this is the full load condition i a f l okay and uh, that is the rating of the machine right so these two intersections will you give you two points for vt now this is vt at full load and this is also vt at full load now to find the maximum value of armature current that means ia max now in the previous session i didn't no, i think i didn't tell this but this ia max is not same as ifl both are different value okay ia max is the maximum that you can uh, take out from the generator and after that the curve will come downwards like the curve will come like this but you should not work in ima ia max you should work only in full load current okay but ia max is the maximum which you can go so to find ia max what you do is that you draw a tangent to this particular curve parallel to this uh, o even okay rf line okay, everything is parallel to rf line so let me just try drawing it parallel so this is the parallel line here okay so what you do you mark this point just like you have marked these two points from there you draw a line parallel to of okay and you take this point here and you take it and project it to here okay and if you know the value of ia max okay so this is the intersection point here so if i draw the curve 
what i will get i can just draw the curve now and it will come back here and uh, finally it is going to come and meet here okay so this will be the isc short circuit current now the good thing about this procedure here is actually for example i have drawn this for the full load this is drawn for full load now what if i want two points for half load condition okay i have drawn only full load points here right for half load what you do you take the half of this value of you split uh, take the middle point of the of line okay half value and you draw a parallel line to rf that also will go and intersect intersecting two points here and here right so if you want uh, the point what you do draw lines parallel to of this parallel to this line from here also you draw parallel to this particular line and then you take and project it here okay and you go and project it here and approximately it would come and meet at this point okay now already i have drawn the curve that is why you already got a point there but anyway if you didn't if you wanted more point for example you wanted at one fourth uh, load you take the one fourth condition draw a parallel line project it to the rf line and take it to the uh next graph okay so this is how you do this now what about the ia max how can you find the value of ia max so that is also easy you take it here it's becoming very cluttered okay you take it downwards like this and you extend this particular line here okay extend this line here so that will meet at that some point here let us call it as say g okay and you project it downwards so this particular length here okay g h say so g h will represent the i a max into r a okay so you know the value of g h so i a max will be equal to g h divided by r a okay so you can find the value of i a max also so this is how you consider armature reaction also while drawing the terminal characteristic so i, I hope you have understood today's session it's not very difficult um, but it just takes a little bit used to understanding okay so just go through this lecture uh, one or two times in case you are having doubts please please put them in the comments below i'll be very happy to answer them so if you like this video please like share and subscribe my channel and i'll see you in the next video thank you